I want to give you context for what we're going to do today, and I want to read to you from Psalm 145, beginning in verse 3. It says, Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. You know what that means? That line means that the greatest experience you've ever had seeking to understand the greatness of the Lord, you didn't even get close. There is that much more beyond. Great is the Lord. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation will commend your works to another. They will tell of your mighty acts. Generations is is one of the special things today that that we're acknowledging and that we're celebrating in this time. Generations tell one another the mighty works of the Lord. Verse 5, they will speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty, and I will meditate on your wonderful works. They will tell of the power of your awesome works, and I will proclaim your great deeds. They will celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. One of the most special things about this community, this Forest Lake Church, is the reality of of the different peoples from different age groups, different inclinations, different generations, different kindred, tribe, and people that all come together and share this space. What unites us is not a singularity of background or a, or a singularity of preference, but rather a singularity in reliance upon the Lord Jesus Christ and His grace to us. This is what gives us our hope. This is what gives us our chance. We had an event several years ago, maybe you remember it, we called it We Are One. How many of you were a part of that event? We met over in the academy. Oh wow, is really that few? Amazing. It's amazing how the community has changed really just in the last 10 years or so. But we had an event where instead of three services, we just had one service and we met over in the academy gymnasium and it was an amazing time. And we drew from every piece of the experience that we might experience it together. And we've heard a lot of voices from a lot of different folks saying, we would like for there occasionally to be an event where everyone spoke, where the voice from every part of the community that was there. Now, obviously, we can't get all of them, but we're at least going to make an attempt at that today. Today, we're going to hear from from, from the choir, which we haven't heard from in a long time. It's awesome to have them back, isn't it? Isn't that amazing? Praise God. <laughs> amazing to have the choir back. And thank you to, to Jeremy, our music director, who's been working with them and, and managed to get the group together and sounding amazing today. So thank you. So glad you're here. We're going to hear from them. They're going to do some different styles. We're actually going to get, I think, within an inch and a half of gospel, I think. (laughs) We're close. We're going to get close today. You'll see. You'll see. But we're also going to hear from the younger generation. And I'm going to talk about generations a little bit as we go along. But generations is a very special theme for me today because my father's here. And my mother's here. And my wife is here. And my daughter's here. And my sons will be dragging in here any minute. But uh, a couple of them (laughs) got here late last night. So Aaron drove home from Southern, got here at about 2. And uh, Nathan drove home from Andrews and got here about 3. So they have a reason for dragging in. But they're going to drag in here. But generations, I get to do what the MDs do every Sabbath this week which is have multiple generational experience. And that's what we want to do. We want to remember, these are the people I love, not just when they do my favorite thing, but when they do their favorite thing too. We're going to hear different things. 
Some of the styles that you're going to hear, you will connect with easily and it will make sense to you. Some of them you won't be as familiar with. But that's okay. There's some people here who know what to do. Just keep an eye on them. They'll show you how to do it. And I'll give you a little primer before we get to the key part. But this is a celebration of the whole of the community. A Thanksgiving Day of celebration. We're going to begin by focusing on the majesty and the glory of the name of God. But let's pray. Father in heaven, send your spirit now to be in this place. Powerfully work in our hearts. Transform this moment and turn us into true worshipers. In Jesus' name, amen.
all stand as we sing that together with them. Alleluia.
Hebrews 13, verse 15 reads, Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that openly confess his name. We just sang that we have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Do you have a sacrifice of praise this morning? Do you have something on your heart to offer God? This is usually the time in which we give our offering back to God. And you'll have the opportunity in a few moments here to give to Florida Advance to the ministry and mission here in our conference and loose offerings toward our church budget, toward helping our church continue to run as a family from the littlest child to the oldest member of our congregation. But I want to invite you today to open that time up a little bit more and not just think about giving thanks financially, but in another way. What is your sacrifice of praise? As you think back over this year, who has God been to you? What has he done in your life? You'll notice at the ends of your pews that you have a little stack of sticky notes. So look there on the end. Some of you I see holding them. And start to pass those down your row because you're going to have something to do with those. I invite you to think of what God has done for you during this year where you have seen his faithfulness. I was sitting on the pew this morning trying to think, what is my sacrifice of praise? What is it that I have seen that God has done that has given me a reason to trust him? And there were many things, but one thing came to mind that I've seen this week. All of us have different stories. Some of us are at the end of our story saying, wow, praise God, this is what happened. Some of us are at the beginning looking ahead saying, okay, I'm going to trust Jesus, but it's going to be hard. And some of us are in the middle and it's not very neat or tidy, and it's kind of messy, and it's a little challenging, and God is faithful there too. So this week, I was able to see a project that I've been working on with my dad finally coming together and, and finishing up and hopefully um, able to bless people around the world. But the backstory to that is that this project actually started three years ago when I was a student missionary in Brazil. And I met some precious people in Brazil. I'm so glad I went there. But long story short, it was actually a very challenging time in my life. I remember being there, and I would have a whole week go by when I was at home, basically. Just, just me. I'd get out like once. And, and just sitting there, and I remember being there saying, Lord, I thought you sent me. And I feel like, like nothing is happening. I feel like, like I'm not making any difference. And things, different things happened that year. I ended up having to come back and forth and visa problems and being stuck for a couple months with no job, if any of you have ever experienced that. But during that time, I, I was started working on this project. And I remember thinking, well, I don't know if this is ever, anything's going to come of this or what's going to happen. So three years later, I got to see this week the fruit of that and how God, through faith, has brought it together. And so for me, that was healing. For me, that was, that was saying, God, you are faithful. You are always working, even though we can't always see it in the moment. So I invite you to take that sticky note, if you haven't passed them down the pew yet, to go ahead and do that. You'll see pens in the back of your pew. And think about your sacrifice of praise. What has happened over this last year that has shown you the faithfulness of God, that he has not failed you, that he has been with you? And write down a phrase or a word that it epitomizes that to you. And then on your way out today, you'll have an opportunity to take it and to place it on one of the boards. There's two right by the door. And they say, give thanks, something like that, all fall decorated. And put those so that as a community, we can come to God and offer our sacrifice of praise. So this time, I'll invite the deacons forward as we bring God our sacrifice of praise.
right? That close. All right, so the crazy thing is now I got to invite you to kneel for prayer when what you want to do is stand in praise, right? But that's all right. They're both kind of the same. So let's kneel together for our prayer time. Father in heaven, Our hearts thrill at the message that he's never failed me yet and that Jesus will bring us out because we might be in the middle right now. The world's still in the middle. We're not out yet. But Lord, I think if we're honest and we look at our life, we can find lots of times you brought us through. Lots of times where your grace was sufficient. Lots of moments when our strength failed, but you were there. Or you sent a brother or a sister or someone to come in our hour of crisis. We thrill to think that maybe there was a time we were the one that was able to help a brother or a sister to represent your grace, your love, your desire. Lord, we come in longing to give you thanksgiving and praise. 
but also sometimes struggling to trust your grace. Looking in places where there is no hope. Relying on things that do not deliver. Trusting in our own weaknesses instead of relying wholly upon the grace that is ours through Jesus. You have said that we are the sons and daughters of God, but we don't always live like that. So Lord, we come confessing our sins, confessing our weakness. Look upon us right now, Lord. Know our hearts. Your Holy Spirit is present to know our hearts. But we also know that your grace is sufficient for even the deceit in our own hearts. So Lord, we confess now and we receive that grace, that assurance that through Jesus we are invited. Lord, we need healing. We need healing in our bodies. We need healing in our spirit. We need healing in our minds. Some of the things that burden us are not our fault. Some of the things that burden us are. But Your grace is sufficient for both. So we come to You completely open, trusting, looking, looking for that strength. Lord, give us the knowledge of the forgiveness of sin. Give us the awareness that we can trust so that we can enter into thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, amen. My name is Kevin Teal, and originally from Maryland. Been living in Florida a little over three years now. Um, been coming to Forest Lake Church consistently, I think since August, late July. Met Pastor Juan uh, the first time I came, and... Uh, He asked me if I wanted to get involved with Young Adult Sabbath School, and um, so I said sure. Took the opportunity to to, to get involved and to to lead uh, in whatever way I can to share my thoughts and ideas and experiences. I work for Avon Health, Um, been there a little over two years, or coming up on two years, so over the last, well not the last, basically like for the first year and a half of working there, I came runner-up a handful of times for promotions, um, different situations and things that I guess probably kept that from being the case, but definitely I became very frustrated. And then also kind of questioning like, God, why am I working here? Should I even be here? That sort of thing. Um, And so definitely some highs and some lows. And so I was applying for different positions. Um, and so after a while, uh, interviewing, I interviewed for some different positions and I got offered a position at uh, a clinic, um, which would have, it was a promotion, it was a leadership position, I would have been very happy with it, except that I was told that I would have to work every Sabbath, that the, um, facility was now open seven days a week. So having come from being so frustrated and praying and saying, God, what am I doing? Like, why am I wasting my time? I'm not getting promoted here. It's not working out. To now get offered a position that I would like, but to come with the caveat that, oh yeah, you're going to have to work on Saturdays. I turned it down with with nothing, (laughs) no backup really. Like, oh, I'm I'm not happy where I am, but I'm just going to stay here and wait. I'll just trust that something will happen and I'll just do what I can. Um, and so I turned down the position that I had been pushing for for a year and a half. And then uh, two weeks later, I got a call back for a position that I had interviewed for over a month earlier that was a far better fit for my experience and for, and for what I've done and also a better opportunity for me to move forward uh, career-wise as well, more, ex- more exposure, more responsibility. So that was trusting God that he had something for me that... Even if he doesn't, oh well, I'll just, I'll just trust that he knows what I need in life. That if I seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, he'll provide everything. <clears throat> you know, I don't have to go seeking after promotion or money or things of this world. Just seek him and then everything follows. See myself as 
a sinner, a mess, a, I don't know, a work in progress. Um, but who I am now with God, with Christ, uh, I, I see a lot of growth. I think there's a whole lot more to go. And it's a, it's a daily walk. It's, it's, you know, you have to die to yourself daily. You have to consecrate each new day. You know, his mercies are new each morning. So each morning you need to give your life to God that day. So, and I think that's what I'm striving for, to maintain the spiritual discipline to day by day, commit my ways to him. And where that goes, I don't know. I have no idea. But again, it's the whole, you don't need to know your future. You just need to know who holds it. Powerful words from a young man, aren't they? Generations, in a sense, uh, some of you can, can reflect on that story because we have, we have some folks here who work for Advent Health and have been working for a long time and now find themselves in very significant leadership positions. But do you remember those days? Remember the days of, of wondering and the times when you felt like it didn't go your way? And, and the times you were tempted to not believe, well, well here's, here's a young man of a new generation journeying that path. We forget, don't we? Sometimes the way the Lord has led us, the places He's brought us, the things He's carried us through, and how important it is, how crucial it is that we trust the Lord regardless of what's going on regardless of what we see in our life, that we are able to trust the Lord. Did you notice the reference there to, uh, it just didn't seem like, you know, the success or the, or the promotion or these other things that, that he was tempted to look to for affirmation, for self? We'll come back to that in a minute. It's hard to be thankful and praise if you don't trust God. And, and when we're not trusting, words like this don't make sense. John chapter 14, verse 1, do not let your heart be troubled. Well, okay, that's good, but I'm feeling a little troubled. It's one thing to say it, right? How do you keep from your heart being troubled? Well, I'll tell you, it's not by figuring everything out. It's not by being smarter than everybody else. It's not by having the answers. It, the verse goes on. It says, do not let your heart be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. And then comes one of the most amazing and powerful promises of the whole Bible. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for everyone except you. Is that how it reads? No, 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 no. I am going to prepare a place for you. That's the promise. That's the promise. And he goes on. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. In that video, you saw the challenge to trust and to be faithful to convictions, but how trusting and being faithful to our convictions can lead to prosperity and blessing. Have you experienced that in your life? If you're going to be able to praise, you have to be able to praise based on the promise. Because you're never going to have the day in your life where everything is perfect. There's always going to be something, right? But yet the call to us is to praise anyway. Can you praise based on the promise? Or do you have to hold it in your hand? I'm trying to learn to praise based on the promise to try to put my hope in the places where my hope won't fail me. We're going to enter into a season of praise, and for some of you, you're not as familiar with this approach to praise. 
But we've been talking about generations, and I just want to, this is just too neat of a story. I just have to tell you a little bit about generations, so I've got to come over here. First of all, this uh, harmless-looking guy over here, you know who this guy is? This is, this is Will Murphy. This is Gail Murphy's son. How many times has Gail Murphy blessed you? It's generations, right? Generations of passing on the faith. Now Will is here to bless us. And, and over here, we got some people over here. This guy here, this, this Juan guy, he actually grew up in this church. And now his generation is here to bless us. And, and this guy over here, this Adam guy over here, his dad is our ministerial director for this region. Generations. And right here, this is Aaron. Aaron's mom and dad are in the choir. <laughs> Generations. And as we were sitting at first service, my dad leaned over to me and he said, is that Aaron Offenbach? I said, yeah, that's Aaron. He said, I remember something about Aaron. 15 years ago, how many of you were here 15 years ago? 15 years ago, there was a festival Sabbath. And there was a little girl by the name of Aaron who was very sick and was in the hospital. But that little girl named Aaron wanted so badly to be a part of the festival Sabbath that she, <laughs> stop that. <laughs> You're gonna choke me up. She wanted so bad to be a part of the festival Sabbath that she pleaded with the doctors to let her out of the hospital. And she came to be a part, that little girl with her pick line wrapped around her arm because they hadn't taken it out so that she could dance with the little girls in the midst of the praise. And I was telling her mom that this happened and her mom said, you know what, I think if I'm remembering this right, we had to take her back in after the service. Generations. Generations praising together. So this generation is here to lead us in praise. And, and a lot of you aren't going to know the first two songs. Some of you will. And a lot of you aren't sure exactly how you worship in this context. But it's all right. We told Will to be careful, to be gentle. You're not used to this, so we don't want to scare you. But here's, here's how it works. You know when you're listening to the choir, most of the time you're supposed to be quiet and listen. All right, and that's good. Don't change that, because there's a reason you're not in the choir, right? <laughs> so that's how that works. When they invite you, go ahead. But here's how this works. You're allowed to sing at any point. Now by now, the choir, they've, this is their third time through, so they know these songs pretty well. So they're gonna be able to sing along. Some of you won't know it, others will. Sing if you can, listen if you can't. Now here's another thing about it. You don't always have to stand up. You don't always have to sit down. You're allowed to do either. So if you see somebody stand, try not to make them feel bad. It's part of it. It's taken me a while to get used to it. I'm not, you know, I don't know. But enter in as you are able. And when we get to the third song of this, you will be able. And you will be glad you did.
unshakable hallelujah you have done great things we sing hallelujah hallelujah god above it all hallelujah god unshakable hallelujah you have done great things you've done great things Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captive and break every chain, oh God. You have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God. You have done great done great things. Oh God, you do great Let's all stand as we declare this together. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood. Than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest friend. Holy trust. But holy trust. that up. Christ alone. Christ alone. Sing it out. darkness. When darkness seems to hide his faith, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every heart and stormy
declare that again with all we've got. When he shall come. What is your hope built on? Is your hope built on your success? I hope not, because your success will go away someday. Is your hope built on believing right? Now, don't get me wrong. I want you to believe right things. But here's the thing. There's not a one of us smart enough to get everything right, is there? So that's not going to work. Is your hope built on your affiliation? Do you remember what John the Baptist said to the scribes and the Pharisees and the Sadducees when they came out? He said, don't think that you can call yourselves Abraham's children. I tell you, God can raise from these stones sons for Abraham. So just having your name somewhere, that's nothing to hope in. How about your good works? Are your good works good enough? It's a, profound, it's a profound verse. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Why is it so profound? Because everything is less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. You see, everything's going to fail you at some point except for Jesus' blood and righteousness. Jesus even warned us, John chapter 16, verse 33, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Let's put our hope in the one who's overcome, not in the ones who fail all the time. There was a man that lived in the mid-1800s by the name of Horatio Spafford. He was a believer. He was a faithful follower of God. He was, he was friends with Dwight Moody, who was a great evangelist of the time. 
He was committed to God's purpose, but his life was anything but simple and smooth. His four-year-old son died of scarlet fever. And then he was fairly successful. He took a good portion of his money and he invested it in real estate in Chicago just a couple years before Chicago burned down in the Chicago fire. Lost it all. But they stayed engaged, they stayed involved, and and Dwight Moody was doing some uh, evangelism in the country of England, and and, uh, Horatio wanted to go, but he couldn't go right away. But he sent his wife and his four daughters to go with Dwight Moody on a separate ship across the Atlantic to be there, to be a part of this. But halfway across the Atlantic, that ship foundered and went down. His wife survived, but all four of his daughters died. Heartbroken, he caught a later ship, and as he was sailing across, he made the request that he would be awakened when he was roughly at the place where the ship had gone down. And when the steward came and woke him and he went out on the deck, some words came to his mind. Are these the words that would have come to your mind? It is well with my soul when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll. Whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. These are the words of someone whose hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. No one else can say that. So what are you building your hope on? It's hard to be thankful in a world that's full of sadness. But can you still say, it is well with my soul? It will be if your hope is built on Jesus. You all sound beautiful. <laughs> we were practicing this whole week with this kind of big combined group, and we, we realized um, we had a missing piece, and that missing piece is now officially, I dub thee, the Forest Lake Church Family Choir. So if you will, let's stand together as we proclaim, it is well with my soul.
snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater so is my word that goes forth from my mouth saith the Lord it will not return to me empty but will accomplish what I desire and will achieve the purpose for which I sent it and you will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn His face towards you and give you peace. Amen.